वेलकम टू साइंस टीम टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द वीक एर ऑफ टाइम यू नो दैट इन ए थर्मोडाइनमिक सिस्टम we have very large number of molecules and entropy suggests that there is some entropy suggests that there is some uh, thermodynamic error of time that is the disorder in a system cannot be undone but uh, is this particle single particles can keep track of time or they they have some fundamental error of time so is it possible that a single particle can tell the direction of time or the error of time so is it possible so to understand this we need to understand what do you mean by symmetries in physics we already studied different kind of symmetries in mechanics like conservation of energy conservation of momentum but uh, now we were going to discuss the symmetries in physics especially in uh, the symmetries in particle physics so there are basically three kinds of symmetries the first is charge conjugation the second is parity we also call it c symmetry the second is called parity or p symmetry and the third is the time symmetry t symmetry and after discussing these three symmetries we will come to the fourth symmetry which is called cp symmetry and after that we will discuss the fifth symmetry which is called cpt symmetry so let's start with these three so the first is charge conjugation the c symmetry or the charge conjugation tells us the very basic fact that if we exchange particles by their anti particles uh, having opposite charges then the fundamental laws remain the same that is uh, if you have positive charges the left side and in the right side you have some negative charges then <clears throat> the forces or the laws governing the charges that is the coulomb's law f equals k q1 into q2 upon r square if we swap these charges like this then the laws governing uh, the system does not change the same force will be applied even the direction of forces will not change they are attractive and they are also attractive you can have another that system in which you have all positive charges in both side you have positive charges and suppose you suppose you replace all the positive charges by some negative charge 
for equal value or you can say uh, their anti particles then the force is still repulsive and the value remains the value of the force remains same so replacing the charges with their uh, replacing the particles with their anti particles uh, produces no effect and this is called c symmetry or charge symmetry so next we have p symmetry or the parity so what do we mean by a parity is a transformation in which we transform the coordinates x y and z to their negative values minus x minus y and minus z or you can say that we are uh, we are putting a mirror in each direction let's take a mirror and if you place a particle here take a point here it is at some distance x then this point will be at minus x so if we take it in three dimensions x y and z axis then <coughs> the parity transformation says that the coordinate system changes like this this will be our minus x direction this is minus y direction and between them this will be the minus z direction so parity transformation can be one dimensional only that is uh, these two are positive or we can take a, uh, it in three dimensions also so each of the coordinates change now take uh, a particle whose position vector is r in this coordinate system then in the new coordinate system it will be minus r the velocity of a particle is v then it will be minus v same like momentum in this coordinate then the momentum will be minus p similarly you have force even acceleration changes the direction similarly the force will also change its direction to minus f because f equals m into a so here it will be minus m into a and what about uh, angular momentum you know that angular momentum l equals r cross p now angular momentum will change like this the new l will be minus r cross minus p and this will be equal to l call it by prime so the sign of angular momentum remains same and uh, some quantities change their di sign or the direction if you see yourself in a mirror then you will find that uh, the the right hand is now becomes your left hand in the mirror so the sense of left and right changes in the mirror world now <coughs> if we take an take a rotating ball suppose this is rotating in this direction in in this direction now if you see its mirror image then there will be no effect on its mirror image i am making a better diagram for it so you are rotating in this direction in the mirror you will also show that it is rotating in this direction so there is no effect of parity transformation on a spin you can experiment it with a mirror that if you rotate a ball or first or first take that uh, you are you are coming closer to the mirror then the image will also come closer and if you go away from the mirror the image goes away from the mirror so you can see that uh, 
if this direction is the positive x then the image is going in opposite direction that is in minus x but if you are rotating clockwise the direction if you are rotating your hand in clockwise direction then you will find that the image is also rotating in clockwise direction so there is no effect of on the spin or the rotational uh, direction in parity transformation now from quantum theory we know that the fundamental particles like it electrons and protons have very uh, have a strange property which we call uh, spin they actually do, do not rotate about any axis but without any rotation they produce the effect of rotation that is they produce magnetic field around uh, them so uh, they have certain uh, some some qualities of being in rotational motion and this is called a spin this uh, this does not mean that they are actually rotating about any axis but it means that they have some intrinsic uh, quantity which we call spin so and this is represented by the letter s so if this ball is rotating like this then the direction of a spin will be this we represent it by a right hand rule if the coordinate system in our real world are basically right handed coordinate system that is if this is the x direction this is y direction then the thumb will point in the z direction but uh, the mirror version or in the mirror world uh, this right handed coordinate system is not valid you have to take it by the left hand so this is if this is the minus x and this is minus y and then, then this thumb will be the minus z axis so uh, these two coordinate systems are completely different and uh, what will be the effect if this, we take this uh, fundamental particle like electron and take its mirror image then what will happen let's see this so suppose that the there is a fundamental particle whose spin is in this direction so although we said that it does not mean that it has some kind of rotation it has a real rotation about any axis but uh, it's some kind of rotation then in the mirror in the mirror you will see that the ro if it is rotating like this then in the mirror it will also rotate in the same direction if it is in anti clockwise then in the mirror it will also seem like anti clockwise so the direction of a spin does not change uh, in parity transformation so you can write it like this s on parity remains s so we can conclude that the quantity like position vector forces acceleration velocity changes their direction over parity transformation while some quantities like uh, angular momentum and spin do not change their direction now see now let's see uh, what is meant by this parity symmetry so if there is some some force between acting between two particles then in the mirror world the same force will act this is a and this is b so b will look like closer and a will be far so the same force will act in the mirror world so we so it's clear that that electromagnetic forces are invariant under parity transformation uh, the laws of gravitation remain same and 
many quantities physical quanti physical processes are uh, symmetric under parity transformation so it's a it's a symmetry which nature which we find in nature so we conclude that in the real world the laws governing the real world are same as the laws governing in the mirror world and this is called the parity symmetry then when but we will see very soon that this uh, symmetry was violated in the in some process the next is the t symmetry so if there is a container in which there are some particles which are moving in any direction in rand they are moving randomly and if you are observing and making a video and if you play the whether you play the video in forward direction or in backward direction you will find that there is no strange thing happening because all the molecules are in equilibrium and they are randomly moving uh, it's different from that of the entropy kind of thing in which the particles are in the start they are arranged and after some time the arrangement goes off and the particles are moving randomly now if you start from a random state in which the particles are in equilibrium then uh, if you make a video and either you play it in forward direction or in backward direction you will not find any difference in that means uh, they are symmetric in time the laws governing the 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 particles the random motion of particles remain same whether we move forward in time or in backward so this is called t symmetry you can also take another example of a pendulum if a pendulum is oscillating then you will find that it's okay if you play uh, if you make a video of this example this pendulum and uh, and you play it in forward or whether it in backward direction you will find no change both will seem to be a realistic example so this is called t symmetry so we have c p and t symmetries and it was thought that uh, all the laws in nature or all the processes in the nature respect these three symmetries but in the in the mid 50s uh, yang and li yang and li wrote a paper in which uh, in which they found that the parity transformation has not been experimentally verified in to be a symmet to be symmetric for a process of weak interaction so yang and li in the mid 50s so yang and li in the mid 50s wrote a paper in which they showed that parity is not conserved or parity is violated in the case of weak interaction and they suggested the experiment and in 1956 the experiment was done by chen xing wu uh, is, this experiment is also known as wu experiment Chen Xing Wu was going to for a holiday with her husband, but she soon cancelled his uh, holiday trip and and went for the experiment. 
so in 1956 the experiment was done and the results the results were shocking and the very famous quantum physicist Pauli said that this is uh, nonsense so uh, what was the Wu's experiment in the Wu's experiment there was a magnetic field a constant magnetic field was applied in a given direction and and cobalt atoms nuclei were placed we know that the cobalt nuclei have some spin and due to the magnetic field they all align in the direction of magnetic field so these are cobalt nuclei and each have their nuclear spin align in the direction of the magnetic field B now we know that the cobalt nuclei go beta decay and by the following reaction to nickel giving an electron and anti neutrino and two photons so so these emitted electrons the direction of these emitted electrons were observed and for a parity symmetry these electrons must be emitted equally in both the direction so let's see why this is so so take a mirror now this is our cobalt nuclei and this is the nuclear spin s because they all are aligned in the direction of the magnetic field now you know that the direction of the spin does not change in parity transformation so in the real world and in the mirror world both will look same so the direction of the spin is same this is the s now in the real world the the experiment it was found in the experiment that all the electrons emitted are going in this direction the electrons emitted from this are going in this direction and every electron is going in the backward direction so these cobalt atoms go undergo beta decay and they emit they become nickel nuclei after undergoing beta decay so <laughs> the spin was in this direction in the direction of the magnetic field so you know that the spin is uh, symmetric in parity transformation so the spin is still in the same direction now the emitted electrons were going opposite to the direction of a spin now if you observe this in the mirror world you will find that a particle going away from the mirror will the image will also go away from the mirror so these are the electrons going in this direction so this is the these are the electrons and this is the spin so here we find that they are both are in the same direction but here the velocity of electrons and the spin are in opposite direction so here we find that that the laws governing the the phenomenon happening in the real world and the and the mirror world are not same so parity is uh, not conserved in uh, in the case of weak interactions 
now what we are they what who and the collaborators were going to expect in the result was that that if parity trans parity is a symmetry for uh, weak interaction then it would have been symmetric if the nickel if the if the electrons emitted were going in both direction suppose emitted electrons suppose a, co a cobalt decay into nickel and it emits electrons in both direction like if this is emitting in this direction and some of the cobalt atoms are emitting electrons in this direction so uh, there may be 50 50 chance of emitting the electrons in either direction then in the real world and in the mirror world we would have there are some electrons going in the left direction and there are some electrons going in right direction so in the mirror world and in the re in the mirror world and in the real world they will they will look same but now in the experiment we found that the electrons each time the experiment was conducted the electron was found to to go opposite to the spin of the cobalt nuclei so this suggested that the parity is violated in weak interaction for weak interactions to be parity symmetric the emitted electron should be in both direction that is some of the nuclei should emit electrons in uh, left direction and some in right direction that is parallel to the uh, magnetic field and anti parallel but in the experiment it was found that every time the experiment conducted the electrons emitted always go opposite to the uh, spin of the uh, cobalt nuclei so if we see it in the in both cases in the real world and in the mirror world we found that uh, in this case the electron is going away from the mirror so electron is going away from the mirror now these two directions are same and these two directions are opposite to conserve the parity the electrons must must go in both the directions so some of the electrons are going in backward direction and some of the electrons are going in uh, going parallel to the spin direction and in this way the parity would have conserved so what what everyone was expecting from the experiment was that uh, the electrons must go equally in both the direction but from the from the results of the experiment they were saw that electrons always prefer a given prefer a fixed direction and this violated the parity symmetry for weak interaction we know that there are four kinds of fundamental forces the first is gravity second is electromagnetic the third is strong force strong nuclear force and the fourth is the weak force now it was observed that all the three above three forces they are parity symmetric now we found that weak interaction for the cobalt nuclei we found that the weak forces they break p symmetry break the parity symmetry so it was thought that uh, so it was concluded that nature somehow cares uh, being left handed or right handed for these three pro uh, forces the it, it was symmetric in uh, it was parity symmetric but for weak forces being left handed and right handed was not same and the 
laws governing them are different so it was thought that there is some underlying law uh, which is uh, which is more broader than this p symmetry so some new kind of symmetry is needed and it was conclude it was found that the new symmetry is cp the charge and parity so if we if we replace so this is the cobalt nuclei this is the spin we have this spin in this direction the electrons are going in this direction so if we replace the the charges by their but the particles by their antiparticles then then the symmetry the is not violated so this is going in this direction so if we in the mirror world if we put a put an electron so uh, put a positron so positron will go in this direction if we put a positron instead of an electron then the symmetry is restored so it was suggested that the c symmetry or the p symmetry applied separately uh, on a process is is not good and applying the c and p symmetry uh, together is the is a broader underlying symmetry uh, then then applying them separately so the in case of wheat interaction the parity symmetry was violated but when we applied charge and parity symmetry together we found that uh, the the symmetry was restored if we replace these electrons with the positrons so in the mirror world the uh, the electrons must be replaced by uh, positrons so so this way the symmetry was restored but again in the year 1964 wolfish and james cronin found that that the cp symmetry is even violated in case of the decay of neutral kaons and uh, even broader kind of symmetry which they suggested that is called cpt symmetry in which we have to uh, keep track of the three symmetry the charge parity and uh, time symmetry together and this symmetry became the uh, fundamental law of nature or the fundamental symmetry of nature so uh, if this symmetry is even violated then we can we have to overlook uh, the the theory like special theory of relativity and quantum mechanics this theory will be in danger if this symmetry is violated because this is the uh, the actual symmetry in which all the uh, which all the processes in nature respect according to the cpt symmetry if if c and p are violated then t symmetry must be violated uh, and if c and p are not violated then t will also be respected so now we come to the final conclusion that so all the processes happening in particle physics respect this cpt symmetry and if uh, if two of them is violated then the third symmetry must be violated so in case of weak interaction we saw that the parity is not symmetry is not a symmetry uh, for weak interaction weak interaction violate parity symmetry and to restore the symmetry we replace the charges by c so c and p uh, separately are violated in case of 
in case of weak interaction so for the cp for cpd symmetry to be valid the t symmetry must also be violated in case of weak interaction that is time is not symmetric uh, in weak interaction so time is is violated in case of weak interaction so so time is also irreversible in case of weak interaction so uh, now we have come to uh, to the final point from which from which we had started our lecture that is uh, can a single or a single particle can um, can keep track of the arrow of time or do they understand or there is some effect of arrow of time on a single particle because uh, but before that we are uh, we have seen that for a uh, large number of particles for a system of particles like gas particles uh, the symmetry they are time symmetric in case of equilibrium and we also saw the uh, when when the system is evolving from an order to disorder state uh, we have the thermodynamic arrow of time so a single can a single particle has is there any effect of the arrow of time on a single particle and the three fundamental forces that is gravitation strong force and the electromagnetic forces had no effect that is they were uh, time symmetric but in case of weak interaction we found that they are also not time they are also not time symmetric because if they are time symmetric then they will violate the cpt theorem so it suggests that weak interactions are not time symmetric and uh, they suggest some arrow of time and this arrow of time is called the weak arrow of time in the next lecture we will discuss the quantum arrow of time please like the video subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching